We're going to evaluate the depth integrals using the graph of f of x. We can think of a depth integral as the sum of the signed area bounded by a function in the x-axis over the interval of integration. Meaning if the area is above the x-axis, it's positive. If the area is below the x-axis, it's negative. So for the first example, we have the depth integral from zero to three of f of x with respect to x. Let's begin by shading the area bounded by the function and the x-axis over the closed interval from zero to three. Which would be this area here. Notice the area is above the x-axis and therefore we view this as positive area. There's a couple of ways we can determine this area. We can use the formula for the area of a triangle which is one half base times height or we can just count the number of square units of the triangle. Let's go and just count the square units. We have one, two, three, and then three half square units. So three plus 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 is 4.5. The depth integral is equal to 4.5. Again, in this case, we can say the depth integral is equal to the area bounded by the function and the x-axis over this closed interval because the area is above the x-axis. Next, we have the depth integral from three to five of f of x with respect to x. Once again, let's shade the area bounded by the function and the x-axis over this closed interval, which would be this area here. Notice how we have a rectangle and the area is above the x-axis and therefore we view this as positive area. The rectangle has an area of six square units. The depth integral from three to five of f of x with respect to x is equal to six. Next we have the depth integral from five to seven of f of x with respect to x. Notice over the closed interval from five to seven, some area is above the x-axis and some is below. So again, let's shade the area bounded by the function and the x-axis over this closed interval. Over the interval from five to seven, we have this right triangle here where the area is above the x-axis. And then over the closed interval from six to seven, we have this area that's below the x-axis. So notice how the area above and below the x-axis over the closed interval from five to seven is the same, and therefore the depth integral is gonna be equal to zero, again, because the area above the x-axis is positive and the area below the x-axis is negative. But let's go ahead and calculate the areas. For the triangle above the x-axis, the area is equal to half the area of a one by three rectangle. Half of three is three halves or 1.5. So first we'd have positive 1.5 for the area above the x-axis, and then plus for the area below the x-axis, we would have negative 1.5. Again, for area below the x-axis, we view the area as negative. And of course, the sum here is zero. Next, we have the depth integral from zero to seven of f of x with respect to x. If we take a look at parts a through c, notice how first we have the interval from zero to three, then the interval from three to five, and then the interval from five to seven. So one of the properties of depth integrals is that the depth integral from zero to seven of f of x with respect to x is equal to the integral from zero to three of f of x with respect to x plus the depth integral from three to five of f of x with respect to x plus the depth integral from five to seven of f of x with respect to x. Which means we can just sum a through C to determine part D, which gives us 4.5 plus six plus zero, which is 10.5. And then finally for part E, we're asked to evaluate the depth integral from zero to nine of f of x with respect to x. And using our properties of depth integrals, this is gonna be equal to the depth integral from zero to seven of f of x with respect to x, which we already know is equal to 10.5, plus the depth integral from seven to nine of f of x with respect to x. So again, here we have 10.5 plus the value of the depth integral from seven to nine of f of x. So let's go ahead and shade the area bounded by the function and the x-axis over the closed interval from seven to nine, which should be this area here. Notice all the area is below the x-axis. And let's find the area by counting the square units. For the area, notice how we have a rectangle and then a triangle below. The area of the rectangle is equal to six square units. And then for the area of the triangle, 
there the triangle is equal to half of the area of a two by two square. Two times two is four, and therefore the area of the triangle is equal to two. Six plus two is eight, but because the area is below the x-axis, we view the area as negative eight, which gives us 10.5 plus negative eight, which is equal to 2.5. I hope you found this helpful.